All right, welcome back to Onsite Public Media. I'm here with Eric Bain, defense attorney, and uh, we're here to discuss the, and I want to get the, the, the language correct, the tossing out of murder three for Mohammed Noor. In layman's, police in layman's terms, that's 100% accurate. Okay, how would we put it in official terms or more descriptive terms? The conviction has been reversed for the third degree murder on Mohammed Noor's case, and it's now being sent back to the district court for resentencing. Okay, Mohammed Noor, 2017, shot and killed Justin Damon in southwest Minneapolis and was convicted of murder three. Correct. Which would have been, I think, 10 to 12 years? Well, he got 12 years, yeah, um, and he's serving the sentence now. Okay, and so it's been four years now. If well, actually, well, that, that, that no, that, it's been. I think he was found guilty in 2018. Yeah, okay, so it was a year later. I was remembering that they, it took a very long time for that uh, that process to go through, and so now that the conviction has been reversed, he's only on the hook for manslaughter. Correct. And what exactly happened for? his conviction to get reversed. For people that don't uh, understand exactly how it happened, the intricacies and details of it, and then at the end of that, I wanna ask you, why do you sure. think that happened? So what, what, let's like, bring me to the start. What did, he's in prison for murder three, and then what? Yeah, so his lawyers filed an appeal. Yeah. Um, and what they were arguing is that he never should have been con found guilty or convicted of murder in the third degree. And murder in the third degree, in order to be found guilty of that, um, you, you, the jury has to find that you, you know, uh, killed someone with a depraved mind. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, you have to uh, intend it towards others. And yeah. so the classic example uh, is someone fires indiscriminately at a passing train. And if they hit someone and, God forbid, kill them, that is murder three. In Mohammed Noor's case, the facts were just quite different because yeah. Mohammed Noor, uh, the, the facts in, at trial came in that he aimed his firearm specifically at one person, the yeah. person who he thought was ambushing their squad guard, yeah. and he intended to shoot that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't uh, firing indiscriminately at a crowd. Now, uh -huh. the argument that the state made at trial was that there were passersbys and you know neighbors, and yeah. he fired. He didn't really know what he was doing, and he could have hurt other people. Okay. And I think that's maybe what carried the day with the jury. Um, but what the what his lawyers did on appeal is argued mm. that you cannot be convicted and found guilty of something for third degree murder if it's targeted at one person. Exactly, and so and we, the, the, the depraved of the mind part too is different than murder too as well. Yes. So how did they try and prove that he was depraved of his mind? Well, you have to remember going back, you know, the, the facts of the case were a little murky before trial. No yeah. one really knew what was, was going no on. There was no recordings, there was no body cam, no the, nothing. The cops were pretty tight-lipped about this. Oh, we yeah. only know a lot of this because it came out at trial. Yeah. You know, maybe separate conversation about the blue wall of silence, yes. but yeah. nevertheless, we didn't know much at the time, and so the prosecutors were making the argument that, hey, we don't really know what happened. Maybe he did intend to shoot this person intentionally. Maybe yeah. he did try to kill this person and now he just has this story, this cover-up story. Yeah. Or maybe he was just shooting indiscriminately. Uh -huh. We're gonna throw it to the jury and see what happens. See what happens, yeah. The, the facts came out at trial and cleared up a lot of that. It was mm -hmm. pretty clear that he wasn't out there just firing indiscriminately. It was targeted at one person. Yeah. Um, and so uh, the jury found him guilty of, of third degree murder, but acquitted him of second degree murder. Oh, so they did go for, they did go for murder too? They did. They went for murder too. They went with um, intentional second degree murder. And the jury found him not guilty, acqu what's, acquitted him of that. What's the difference between intentional second degree versus just second degree? Or is that all the same? No, there are two, and our murder and manslaughter statutes are yeah. a little convoluted and confusing, but um, there are two ways in which someone can be convicted of murder too. One okay. is intentional and one is unintentional. So um, he was charged with intending to kill someone. It just wasn't premeditated. 
Okay, interesting. And the jury found him not guilty of that. So uh -huh. he was acquitted and he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. But he was, the top count on which he was found guilty was the murder three. That's fascinating because we were talking about this months ago and you said murder three probably wouldn't be the right thing to apply to what happened with Noor. And yet it's been uh, reversed, I would say tossed out because that's what it said in the headlines. Uh, but yet murder two, the unintending, like uh, unintentional murder two, it, it's, it seems more fitting for what happened almost in... in, in, in yeah, you know, down. again, I think it was a charging decision by the Hennepin County Attorney's Office, and for whatever reason, they went with intentional second-degree murder. And that was Mike Freeman, to be to point out. Yep, his office. Yep, he's still the Hennepin County Attorney. Okay, so back to the process. He, his lawyers then say, hey, we want to toss out murder three. What's the first step that they take? Yeah, so they file an appeal with the Court of Appeals in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, and then you file a brief. You argue it to the Court of Appeals, and then the Court of Appeals, three-judge panel, they come back with a decision. And um, the Court of Appeals were asked to kind of rush their decision a little bit be in time for the Chauvin trial to start. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like the 11th hour. I don't remember yeah. how soon before. But it and these was, are three random judges. Well, there, I believe there are 15 judges total at the Court of Appeals. Okay. And there are teams of three that will Got decide it. any one case. Okay. So it's a three judge panel. Um, and the three judge panel decided um, on the Noir appeal that the third degree murder uh, conviction should stand. Okay. And so- And that was two to one. I believe it was two to one. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so that was the, the ruling from the Court of Appeals. And so then, it dies there. It, no, no, it can keep going. Okay. And so Noor's lawyers filed um, a petition for review to the Minnesota Supreme Court. Yeah. They granted review. And then, um, you know, that case was argued. And they just issued a decision, I believe it was last week, um, overturning mm -hmm. the third degree conviction in Noor's case. And the Supreme Court takes precedence over the Court of Appeals, over the district court. So they have that power. That's what they decided. Um, and so now uh, Muhammad Noor's case will go back to the district court mm -hmm. for sentencing now that the third degree murder is off the table. So he gets new sentencing. Yeah. And some are saying that he could be out of prison as soon as October of this year. It's possible. I haven't done the math myself, okay, but it's I'm certainly possible out. because um, he was charged with three counts. Yeah. And he was convicted of the lower two, the third degree murder, and then a, a manslaughter charge. I yeah. believe it was the second degree. And the second degree manslaughter uh, carries about a 48 month prison sentence. Okay. And well, so. Then that's pretty much what he's served already, yeah. That's exactly right. Well, I mean, almost, yeah. I mean, in I Minnesota, you do two thirds of any sentence okay. on good time. Okay. You know, assuming you don't get into any prison fights or. Yeah, anything you know, brew any toilet wine or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it would work out, I believe, where he very realistically stands to be released from prison soon. Okay. Um, on the manslaughter charge, mm -hmm. having served his time. He was sentenced to, I believe it was 12 years um, yeah. on the murder three. And so if that goes away, then that longer sentence goes away. And the Supreme Court, describe to me, who are the people in the Supreme Court and do we vote the people in the Supreme Court? How does that, what is yep. a, a state Supreme Court comprised of? Yeah, they're elected officials. Mm -hmm. um, the people of Minnesota get to vote them in or out. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, there are challengers. Um, Not it's, really often, because when you see the ballots, it's like one choice, one choice, one choice, one choice. It's, it's very rare. Um, yeah. so I would say Supreme Court justices are more frequently challenged compared to district court or court of okay. appeals judges. Okay. Okay. Um, but it does happen sometimes, but they're voted on by mm -hmm. the people and, you know, so they're elected officials. You have to have a certain credential to even run as a Supreme Court justice, right? You couldn't just write in Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> well, you, you can write in whatever you want. Yeah. Um, but in order to be sworn in, you know, it's a good question. In Minnesota, I actually don't know if you have to be, you know, 
practicing law and have yeah. a law licensed and be a barred member. If anybody off the street could <laughs> just be like, well, I don't like the way that they make decisions, I want to be a Supreme Court justice. It's a good question. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. That would be interesting to figure out. That I just, I just wanted to know because usually when you see a ballot, it's just one name and it's just the incumbent, you know, every yeah. year. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's made up of people that we voted in. Yep. And there are how many Supreme Court justices in Minnesota? Seven. Seven. And it was a unanimous vote. On Noor. On Noor. Unanimous. It is, is that shocking or is that like yes. not shocking? Well, also, <laughs> in, in a, just in today's hyper-partisan yeah, atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, you would think there'd be some. No one, you know, collectively, we very rarely can agree on anything. Yes. And, and our Supreme Court has people on different sides of the ideological spectrum, the political mm -hmm. spectrum. Um, you know, they're not supposed to run as a Democrat or Republican, and they, they don't. But based on their decisions, you can kind of tell yeah, where these Supreme Court justices yeah. lie in terms of how they see the world. But we have justices with different points of view, and mm -hmm. they unanimously made this decision. So. I'm surprised in that sense, but on a pure legal basis, I'm not surprised in the slightest because to me, it was just so crazy that um, Mohammed Noir was charged with third degree murder, yeah. let alone convicted of it, yeah. and that the Court of Appeals upheld that conviction. Exactly. So to me, it's the right outcome. The mm -hmm. Court of Appeals should have reversed it way back when, At but that point, yeah. here we are. So how does this affect Derek Chauvin's conviction of murder three. Uh, that will get tossed, uh, but- So Derek Chauvin's murder three is gonna go out the window? Yeah. Why? For the same reason that Mohammed Norris is gonna go out the window. Okay. Derek Chauvin's uh, charges were based on his actions towards one particular person. Yes. He put his knee on George Floyd's neck mm -hmm. for over nine minutes. Yeah. Um, there is no doubt that he targeted his criminal behavior towards one person. And murder three would say you're targeting anybody, any, like more than one person. Yeah, you have to you know, act with a depraved mind you know, towards others. Yes. Okay, and I'm vastly oversimplifying, but um, it's towards others. And that's the main reason that the Supreme Court in Minnesota is over, overturned the conviction for Muhammad Noir. Same thing's gonna happen to Derek Chauvin. Now so that, that, what, that, uh, that appeal is gonna happen at some point, or has it already happened? I, it hasn't happened uh -huh. that I'm aware of, um, yeah. but I'm sure it will very soon, okay. and it will just be a procedural thing. Mm -hmm. It will go through. Derek Chauvin's murder three conviction will be overturned. And, and is it based out. on precedent? Yeah, yeah, okay. based on precedent in New Orleans. And you know, remember too that uh, the district court judge in Chauvin's trial, Judge Cahill, dismissed the third degree murder against uh, Derek Chauvin for the same reason that the Supreme Court just last week overturned the third degree against Mohammed Noir. Okay, okay. But once the Court of Appeals ruled on Noir's case, Judge Cahill said, I think the Court of Appeals is wrong but they have supremacy over me, and so I feel obligated to reinstate the third degree murder against mm -hmm. Derek Chauvin, yeah. and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. Um, and so that's what happened. But uh, I'm very confident it'll be overturned. I guess the bigger question would be, well, how does it affect his sentence? And I don't think it will. And all. then also, how does it affect the other three officers, uh, Lane, Tao, uh, uh, Kyung, like how does it affect their sentencing? coming up as well, because I'm assuming Well, they have to have a trial first. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, we'll see what happens with their trials, um, but they will not, I would be surprised if they stood trial on murder three, aiding and abetting murder three. Oh, aiding and abetting, because then, yeah, because they have got stricken from them. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, getting us educated and updated on what that means, um, because I know the headlines don't always, you know, they don't always illustrate everything, yeah. you know, as well as somebody could who's uh, well-versed in the law, so thank you. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me.